Is it time to party like it's 2003? I sure hope so. Let's talk about it. Mom, thanks for watching. Last time Purdue beat Wisconsin, it was 2003. Brandon Kirsch and Kyle Orton were splitting time at QB. Joe Tiller was the coach. There were 11 teams in the conference. Purdue was finished fourth in the conference, went six and two. I had a little bit more hair on my head. I had less gray in my beard. There was no boiled sports and LBD hadn't been born yet. It's been a long time. Things have changed a lot since then. Wisconsin has dominated Purdue since then and some prediction sites think that domination will continue. They have Wisconsin's chance of winning well over 90%. They also have Wisconsin's chances of winning the West in the Big Ten over 90%, I think 92 or 93%. Is this coming Saturday's game Purdue's Alamo? Is this the chance for Purdue to prove that they belong in the conversation? We don't even know if there's gonna be a game on Saturday. Wisconsin is still dealing with lots of COVID cases. They had 22 cases between players and coaches alike. And on Tuesday, according to Jeff Brom, we will probably hear if the game will be played or not. If it's not played, of course, it's not, it's not called a loss for Wisconsin. It's called a no contest, and I believe it doesn't go down in either con column for Purdue or Wisconsin. That would be Wisconsin's second straight no contest game. Of course, they had the same thing versus Nebraska last week. If you're looking for a gift for somebody who is really hard to buy for, check out gridironmetalworks.com. They do great stuff. Get a Purdue grate or get one with one of the military branches on there from your friends and family or even another school. They have some other licenses. You know, there's only one school that matters to us though here. gridironmetalworks.com, our pals, Purdue people. Purdue squeaked out a game versus Illinois. They won 31 to 24. It didn't feel great in that fourth quarter as Purdue floundered around offensively, defensively, and on special teams. And it felt like Purdue could lose in regulation. I said to myself, I said out loud to the people I was wa watching the game with, they're going to lose in regulation because Lovey Smith's going to go for two. Sure enough, in his post game comments, he said he would have gone for two had they scored. Instead, you guys know what happened O'Connell hit. Bell down the right sideline for a one-handed catch. A great catch, a great pass, and a tough place for the DB to get to it. It was on the outside. And Bell went up with his big right hand and caught that ball and sealed the victory. Bell is the first wide receiver to have five straight 100-yard games, according to GBI. That's a big deal. That's noteworthy. That's historic. And he's just getting started. I think our best case scenario is probably we get Bell this year and next year based on what we're seeing and hearing. Last week, Kirk Ferentz called him the best receiver or one of the best receivers he's seen in 21 years. That says a lot. He's the real deal. He does a lot of things really well. Illinois tried to do everything they could to take him away, and yet Purdue still found a way to use him effectively, get the ball to him in different ways. Bell's a great route runner. Bell's crafty. He uses his body well in spite of being not the biggest guy on the field. He can go up and grab the ball with about anybody draped on him. As we said before the season, Purdue has quite a few great wide receivers. When Rondell Moore went down, we thought, okay, it's Bell's team now. And turns out it's Bell and Wright's team. Wright also is starting to come into his own. And I think we'll have another receiver announce their presence maybe in the next week or so. This wide receiver room is still great, even without Rondell Moore. And Jeff Brom talked about this week how Rondell Moore, there is no official word yet if he'll play, and they'll let us know what are you going to do. Following the Illinois game, Purdue received 15 AP votes. That puts them a step closer to being ranked. I think maybe if they would have had a bit more dominant performance or just kind of stepped on Illinois in the fourth quarter like they started to do in the third quarter, Maybe they would have gotten a little bit closer to being the top 25, but as it stands right now, they'd be about 36th. Not a bad place to be. And they're edging ever closer every week. I think if they keep handling their business, they will get into the top 25. They have not been ranked for a long, long time. Check out AJ's. These guys are great. They got 20 beers on tap. And when you are in West Lafayette, you know where to go for Boiled Sports' favorite burger. That's AJ's. EatAJ's.com. One of the main reasons they were able to salt this game away and one of the main reasons they were able to win last week was the performance of Xander Horvath. A lot of people said, oh, this is pretty great. Three straight 100-yard games. 
The last guy who did that was Mike Allstott. Well, how many times did Mike Allstott run for 100 yards at Purdue? 15. Obviously, the comparisons between Horvath and Allstott come a little bit easy. Both players wear the number 40 or wore the number 40 in Allstott's case. Both are big Caucasian running backs. Allstott played fullback. Horvath has played halfback. But they are a little bit different. Horvath is six foot three, 230 pounds. Allstott left Purdue at six foot one, 240 pounds, right there in striking distance. Horvath, though, I think is a really legit talent. He can do a lot of things well. I'd say he's a lot more well-rounded than Allstott. I saw both play. So did Jay. So did others on the site. But we were actually there when uh, Allstott was uh, terrorizing defenses that had to play Purdue. Let's not get ahead of ourselves when we when we call Horvath the next Allstott. Number one, Allstott was featured as a sophomore. He was one of the main back as a sophomore. Last year, really, it was King DeRue's job. So Horvath only finished with under 400 yards, I think, at the end of the season. Allstott finished with close to 1,000 as a sophomore, I think, in the 800s. After that, he had two straight seasons of 1,000-plus rushing, and he split time with Corey Rogers in that backfield for Jim Coletto. Right now, it's Horvath's job, and it would be great if King Daru could come back off an of injury, if Purdue could get another running back back there, maybe Hewitt could get involved, but clearly the coaches aren't ready to put another guy in there. And that's a bit of a shame because Horvath, while he's finishing runs so well, he drags everybody forward, he doesn't fall backwards, He's been very, very good. He's averaging 5.4 yards per carry. King Daru, get well soon. Purdue needs it. Horvath needs it. Till then, it's Horvath's job, and he is going to be dragging these boilers as long as he's physically able. Also, as you know, AOC had a great day, great game on Saturday. Completed a high percentage of passes, and he made some boneheaded uh, mistakes. I talked about that a bit in my post game uh, on this site. And the one of the things that I thought was really interesting is we saw kinder, gentler Jeff Brom when AOC came off the field. We didn't see him chewing on him like he used to David Blau or Elijah Sindelar or even Jack Plummer. We saw Coach saying, good job, get him next time. He one time got after him a little bit, but still nothing like we're used to seeing Jeff Brom do. And I don't know if this is a new leaf or is this a new tactic. I can't figure it out. But even after the game... Coach Brom stays very, very positive with AOC. I think I still think Plummer should be ready. I still think a second quarterback is a possibility. But how could you pull the plug on AOC when he was completing passes at the rate that he was on Saturday versus Illinois, especially in that third quarter? Our friends at Martin Vintage are a family-owned Purdue business. And if you're looking for Purdue gear... Go to martinvintage.com right now. They've got a brand new sweatshirt that's got the old block P on the on the sleeve and the old Pete swinging a hammer on the front. I love the retro stuff. This is exceptional. There's a hoodie or there's a crew neck. Check them out, martinvintage.com. One big complaint a lot of people have, myself included, was the fact that Purdue dropped into a prevent defense in, for all intents and purposes in that fourth quarter and it gave Illinois all sorts of chances to pass the ball underneath. Purdue had three down linemen for much of that quarter. Purdue was dropping guys way back in coverage and uh, that isn't a great look for a team that really doesn't have a linebacker that of the Jawan Bentley, Marcus Bailey type of cloth. A guy that can go cover a lot of ground, understands the situation right away. Derek Barnes is a great linebacker. Derek Barnes doesn't have the wheels of either of those, those linebackers. Also, Graham has the wheels of those, of those linebackers, but really doesn't have the experience. If you combine Barnes and Graham, you might have a perfect linebacker right now. Sadly, we can't do that. So Purdue's dealing with an inability to cover a lot of space by these linebackers, and the inability to stop things and shut down teams. These linebackers need to mature in a hurry, though. I think that would go a long way into making the defense better. But more so than that, the scheme has to get better. When Purdue's up by a score or two, man, I'd love to see that that prevent defense tossed out of there because that surely wasn't effective versus Illinois, versus Illinois and it almost cost Purdue the game. So everybody, keep your fingers crossed. Maybe Purdue will get its shot at Wisconsin on Saturday. Hopefully they do. If they do, it'll be a slightly abridged lineup for Wisconsin for the second straight week. Purdue will be playing a team that is down a few guys because of the COVID virus. 
One thing they need to do, one thing they need to show is that they can finish games regardless of the situation, and they've done a good job at that so far. I would say Purdue was in a very adverse situation the first week versus Iowa. I would say Illinois fought through a lot of adversity versus Purdue this last Saturday, and Purdue has a chance to play another team who's going to be fighting through adversity if Wisconsin and Purdue take the field on Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Hope you're having a great week. God bless you, and hammer down. BS all the time.